Um, so here is my four part definition of what is an authentic business. So first of all, it's when you're selling something that is deeply meaningful to you. Now, I don't know if you've had any experience before in, in sales. Some of us have, most of us probably haven't. That's okay. But uh, if you've ever had an experience working for a company, selling something that's not really meaningful to you, you know the, the <laughs> opposite of what an authentic business, at least an authentic business experience is. So if you create something out of your own experience, like you know Sarah and Jan and Clara have written, um, it's probably deeply meaningful to you. Now, you could also be selling other people's products or other companies' products but if it's deeply meaningful to you, you will be selling with passion. Uh, you will be sharing about it with a genuine sense of this is a cause. And that is really, uh, it makes business so much more enjoyable every day to do, right? Instead of just doing it for the money, right? And, uh, secondly, second part of the definition is that the way that you market your business, the way that you do your marketing and selling feels to you and to the audience, like an honest friendship and an act of service towards them. Both your audience, meaning your customers, potential customers, and your collaborators, meaning your, you know, your vendors, your potential, you know, your, your business partners, your fellow colleagues who promote your business, et cetera. So the way you do your marketing. Now, this is different from marketing as a means to an end is how so much of us have been trained to do marketing. It's just, oh, I'm, I'm doing the right marketing steps so that I'll get the enough customers or clients so that I can finally do my purposeful work, right? It's all this, it's all this theater before we get to the thing that we're really meant to be doing, which is our purposeful healing or, or coaching or the product that we want people to experience, whatever it is. Well, here's the reality of it. The majority of people who encounter your business will never buy from you if your marketing is successful. Now, how can that be, George? Isn't, if successful marketing means that most people buy from it, isn't that true? Actually, successful marketing, if your, market, if, if your marketing is done well, you get a lot of word of mouth, which means so many people are encountering your brand. And the more successful it is, the smaller the percentage of those who buy. If your marketing is not successful, if you are pushy, that means people don't spread the word about you. That means very few people encounter your brand, which means that you know, only 10 people encounter your brand, 100 people, 1,000 people encounter your brand, and you're trying to push every single one of them to buy. Now, many of them might buy, but would you rather have 10% of 100 or 1% of 100,000? Right? So if you think about any brand that is successful, any of the major brands, many people on earth have heard of them, but many people on earth haven't bought anything from them this year. That is what successful marketing is. Now, you don't have to become an Apple or an Amazon or whatever it is, but you can be your own, um, you know, uh, someone who has made a big impact on a lot of people. So in other words, your marketing itself makes an impact on others and likely leaves impressions on many more people than are going to buy from you in any given year. So, so that's what I hope uh, that we'll, we'll take on is that the marketing itself is part of your purpose in your business. The marketing itself is an act of impact and therefore we can do it with love. We can, we can do it with honesty, we can do it with uh, a, a sense of exploration and personal development for ourselves too. So that's why that's, I see marketing as the act of a business finding its calling. An act of a business trying to figure out what is my passion and how does that align with the world's wants? And that alignment is where successful marketing happens. So I hope this is helpful and let's continue on here. <clears throat> Thirdly, an authentic business is consistently meeting reasonable financial goals that you set rather than hype and fantasy. So you're never going to hear me say, hey, I'm going to get you the six figures in 60 days unless you were already at high five figures last month. 
if you are high five figures last month, I can get you six figures this month, and probably with a few tweaks, right? But most of us, you know, we, we get into this fantasy that we hear from other marketers and it's not authentic because we set these unreasonable financial goals oftentimes that give us stress and pressure and gives the audience stress and pressure because we have to push so hard to meet our certain numbers to feel successful. And that allows us to, well, that, that, that forces us to, to go away from our souls rather than how can, how can we instead plan financial goals that are actually reachable, you know, maybe with a bit of a stretch with diligent work, but without having to push either um, unduly pressure either ourselves or our audience. Okay. And then finally, um, you know, rather than stressful hustle or painful resistance that you, you experience every single day, if you operate your business from a joyful productivity mode of working, then you are getting closer and closer to authentic business.